I'm very happy and grateful that I've been invited again to speak in this uh, service. Yeah, thank you very much. I always feel welcome in this place. I feel that all of you are very warm, very welcoming. You are very gracious with all my shortcomings, the way I speak, the way I, I express myself sometimes. It's, it might be different than yours, but you are always willing to listen. You are always willing to welcome me, so I thank you. Let me, yes, thank you. I, ca I come here with my family in Christ in, uh, from Mar Sharon. I come with my, my wife, of course, and because just like uh, the elder said that behind every man, there's a wonderful woman. So yeah, I came with my wife. Yes, thank you very much. Please play, clap your hands for my wife. And my team from Surabaya, are, they are leaders in my cell group. I, I serve in home fellowship. I'm a leader in home fellowship and they are my leaders as well. They come at their own accord they, they came because I preach uh, in English. <laughs> they know uh, how stressful it is for me. Though I, speak, I can speak uh, for six hours actually in English to Brother Daniel here. But uh, it was, you know, without Mike, without Mike. Uh, Usually when uh, my English and my grammar is amplified, I can feel the mistakes. I can hear the mistakes, you know. Sometimes I'm, I feel intimidated, but you have been gracious. God has been gracious. So I thank you. Today I would like to share a theme that is kind of a warning because since Friday I've been talking about inheritance and today the theme will be a lot losing the inheritance this is one of the character that is a kind of a warning for me when I read the Bible I, I my, my way of reading the Bible is really not analytical actually it's very storyline driven I'm driven by character I'm interested why a character decides whatever he decides in the Bible I'm trying to learn from them so that I, I don't if they make mistakes I don't want to repeat their mistakes if they make good decisions I want to make the same decisions that, that he did so this time me and my wife, we prayed and uh, we felt that I have to share this. I have to share about Lot. Anyone here has read about Lot before? Oh, like 100% of you. Um, for me, Lot is a warning because I believe that whatever we have in Christ is something that we get from inheritance for me an inheritance is received by grace it is not received because we are good it is not received because we are smart it is not received because we have the power to receive it it is received by grace that's why it's called inheritance it is given from father to son it is given from God the Father to the sons of God. It is given from God the Father through the church to the sons of God in the church. Anyone who believes in this spiritual principle, please say amen. amen. Yes, what we have, all the blessings that Jesus Christ is giving us is through the inheritance. So let us read uh, one verse, uh, Romans 8. 17. In NIV, it says this way, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, 
heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings, in order that we may also share in His glory. There's the word if. If we are children, then we are heirs. There's the word if. I like the word in Indonesian, in, uh, in my language, when the heirs is called ahli waris. Ahli waris uh, is, if you want to literally translate to English, is the expert in inheritance. So becoming an heir, you should be expert in handling the inheritance. Becoming an heir should be involved in how to handle the inheritance because the inheritance is powerful. The inheritance is precious. The inheritance from God the Father is really a boundless treasure. Anyone who agrees this, please say amen. Because of that, that we have to be really expert in handling something that is so precious. But sometimes, we are not expert in that. Lot is one of the example who are not expert in handling the inheritance that he is presented with. Let us read some part of the story, stories of what Lot has gone through. It started with Abram. Lot's story doesn't start with Lot himself. It starts from someone else. Most of the time, we came to Christ not by on, on our own. We didn't, you know, walk on the street and suddenly, you know, unlike Paul probably, only Paul probably has no evangelist who spoke to him. You know, Paul met Jesus Christ by himself, you know. Jesus became the evangelist for Paul. So he owed to no one. But most other people, will hear the gospel from someone else, from somebody else in a church. So we owe a lot to someone else. We must, can, we must be very honest about it. Anybody hears, anybody hears the gospel the first time from Jesus Christ himself, like Paul in the Bible? Can you please raise your hand? Almost no one, yeah. So you kind of owe someone else your life here. So you kind of, kind of owe your inheritance in Christ to someone else. Because someone else at least presented the opportunity to receive Christ because they are doing the gospel. They are following Christ. They are doing what God is uh, they're doing the purpose of God in their life and then you are being presented with the inheritance something that you actually are not worthy to take it actually you're not even worthy to touch anything holy because we were all of us were sinning we're not worthy to see the holy God and yet someone of course God first sent that guy to save you Someone was willing enough to find you and present you the vision of God for your life. Lot, Lot's life started with Abraham. Abraham was the one who received God's vision first. Let's read starting from Abraham, starting from Genesis 12, verse 1 in NLT. Genesis 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. Uh, please notice in this verse, there's the word leave, and there's a word called relatives there. So in the vision, Abraham was called by God the Father to leave his previous life, including 
the relatives. And yet, this is what happened in verse 2. Uh, God continues the vision first. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. There's a great big promise, a great big vision that God gave to Abraham. He's like the father for Lot. Lot is like a son to Abraham. I'm saying son because God specifically said, leave the relatives. And yet, on verse 4, so Abraham departed as the Lord has instructed. And Lot went with him. So, Abraham didn't consider Lot as a relative. I, I believe, I believe Abraham considered Lot as a son. Abraham loved Lot so much, he didn't even consider Lot, which is actually his nephew, but uh, because he, he should have left his nephew behind. But he kind of overstepped his bounds and he considered, I think he adopted in his heart, he adopted Lot as Abram's son. So Abram was treating Lot as his son, not even as a relative. So Lot got into the vision of God through Abraham. Most of us, as I discussed earlier, most of us owed our life to someone who received a vision from God and then they believe God and is doing the will of God and preach to us. Because of someone else, you are here. Because of someone else, I was here. I owe whatever that is good in my life right now because of my church. Without my church, I will not be here and speaking to you. Without my church, I will not be, I will not even own a company. Without my church, without my spiritual father's vision, I will not be here. So I owe the inheritance that I got from God the Father is because of the vision and the faith of my spiritual father. I owe everything to God, of course, but through my spiritual father. Lot should have had this grateful feeling towards Abraham because the Bible specifically detailed whatever life that Lot has always through Abraham. Let's read verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 1. Again, so Abraham left Egypt and traveled north into the Negev along with his wife and Lot. Always there's a Lot behind it. Lot is like a hitchhiker. He's like a passenger. God is always speaking to Abraham, but Lot is always there with Abraham. So it's like uh, whenever Abraham moved from Haran to the Canaan, Lot was there. From Egypt to Negev, Lot was there. Through thick and thin, Lot was there. There's a certain loyalty actually from Abraham and from Lot. I don't know what happened. Maybe because Lot lost his father so that he followed his uncle. He felt that, yeah, maybe this is the father that I should have had. So Lot adopted as well, probably for a time, Abraham as his spiritual father. That's why from Haran into Canaan, Lot followed Abraham. From, so he followed Abram everywhere from Canaan to Egypt and from Egypt to Negev. He was following Abram for years. 
And eventually, because of the vision that God gave to Abraham, this is what happened. Chapter 13, verse 5. Lot, who was traveling with Abraham. This traveling with is years of traveling. This traveling with Abraham could be years in the making. I'm glad today I witnessed people who I respect. Elder Ng, Elder Liu, I know all the elders have been serving together with FGA since even, uh, I think you even knew the founders, right? You have been following the founders. I respect people who followed their spiritual fathers for 40 years. I haven't, I haven't done that. I've, I've been following my spiritual father for 22 years. See, I'm, I've, I've done only half of whatever that you have done. Please give a big hand for someone who can follow their spiritual father for 40 years and still following. It's just an admini administrative leave, right? You're still following. So, because a lot is the opposite of what Elder Ng is demonstrating in his life. Lot has been loyal to a point. How do you define loyalty? Do you define loyalty as serving for 10 years? Do you define loyalty as serving for 14 years? I don't know, in today's market, I don't know, maybe it's only in Indonesia. People who've worked for one company for 14 years, people will be proud of that. They, they feel that they have done a good service for the company. They feel that if they have followed someone for 20 years, that's an achievement. But God is the God of time. He's timeless. He's the ageless one. He's the God of was and is and is to come. So time doesn't come into play. Loyalty in the eyes of God is serving to the end. Loyalty in the eyes of God is giving your whole life to a cause. When you are convicted of a cause, when you are convinced that this is the cause from God, you give your life to it. Just like Paul did, just like Abraham did. Abraham was called into a very big vision. He was, he's called into a vision that says, I will make you into a great nation. And yet, Abraham didn't, didn't even have a son. Maybe he, he was planning for one in Lot. He's planning for the first adopted son in Lot. He was planning a great nation through Lot. He's bringing Lot everywhere. I believe Lot was, was being taught into everything that Abram knows about God. He's, he, was, he was training Lot for the next generation, I believe. He was giving everything because Lot was with Abram everywhere. Church is about being a father, spiritual father, raising up the next generation, not, in, ju not just in terms of the age, but in terms of whatever that we have, we have to inherit whatever that we got from God into someone else's life. We must sow the seed of this inheritance because it's so powerful, it's so precious. We cannot just uh, use it for our own life. We want, because it's so beautiful, we want just to share it with everyone. So we want to give it to the next spiritual son that we can give. Abraham was like that. He knows that this is, I will make you into a great nation. It's a big, huge vision. He says, I will bless you. I will make you famous. And I will make you I will, uh, and you will be a blessing to others. He wants to bless others. He is so full of this vision. He's so full of this inheritance. He just wants to share it with Lot. 
He shared it with Lot. And yet, Lot was loyal for a while. Lot was loyal until there was a problem. Because in verse 5, 13.5, Genesis 13.5, it says, Lot, who was traveling with Abraham, loyal until that time, had also became very wealthy. There was a change of status. Maybe Lot followed Abraham because he was not wealthy. Maybe because he didn't have anything. So he followed someone who has something. Maybe you came to Christ because you were in trouble. There is a, a lack of something inside your heart. Maybe you lack financial strength. So you came and prayed for blessings. And blessings came. So you were grateful until you feel that you no longer lack anything. If there is a change of status, will you stay loyal? This loyalty in God's eyes, it's not in terms of time. It's in terms of the test, in terms of the changes in your life, in terms of the choices that you have to make. Loyalty will be tested in your life. When there is a big change, will you stay loyal? At this moment, I'm grateful that I, I see a great change in FGA. There's a change of leadership from Elder, Liu, from Elder Ng to Elder Liu. There's a change. So this is a test for all of us. If there is a change, and also recently you have adopted a more focused vision, 100 and 100,000. I didn't say it's bigger, it's more focused. 100 churches, to build 100 churches and 100,000 disciples. There's a change. If there's a change in status, if there's a change, will you stay loyal? This is not about time. This is a test if there is a change. There was a change in Lot's status in his life. It becomes a test. Lot maybe when he was loyal to Abraham, when he was still following and traveling with his spiritual father, because maybe because he felt that he was not wealthy enough. He was not independent enough. And suddenly, in verse 5, it says, had also become, there is a change, very wealthy. Wealthy could mean a lot of things. It could mean wealthy in financial terms. But it, also mean, it could also mean wealthy in spiritual terms. Wealthy in uh, experience terms. If you feel that you have no, you, you know enough about God, then you don't need to follow anyone. If you believe that you have experience enough, you know enough about the Bible, then you don't need to listen to any spiritual father. Sometimes I felt that way. That was when I was really young, spiritually actually. I read the Bible three times at that moment three times and I felt I was on top of the world because I, 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 I asked a lot of people how many times have you read the Bible and most of I know it's, it's in Surabaya in, in my, the people that I know most of them will say I haven't read it all maybe I read some part of it maybe 75% I read some parts a lot of times but some maybe in numbers Leviticus they don't want to read <laughs> I don't know, this, this is the hardest part, you know. But so when I, I felt that three times the whole Bible, I felt very wealthy. I felt that I, I know a lot. I felt 
I've, I've experienced a lot. I, I've known enough that I don't really have to follow anyone. I don't need a spiritual father. When I first started following my church, I thought because I know nothing, so I followed. But then when I came, became very wealthy in verses, although I cannot really remember everything, but I, I thought I was wealthy enough so I can become independent. At that moment, the test will come. How about you? How many times have the test come? Have you experienced change in your life? If it doesn't change from you, it might change from the church. Just like right now, there's a change of leadership. There's a change of vision. Like there's another situation in uh, Lot and Abraham's uh, situation. They became very wealthy and there's a clash between uh, Lot's men and Abraham's men. They, 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 they fight for resources. There's a clash of uh, will, kind of. If you feel you're wealthy enough, maybe you and your spiritual father have their own wishes and you don't want to follow anymore maybe because that's what lot did it says verse 5 he had also become very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats herds of cattle and many tents there are many different wealthiness in his life so lot became very comfortable he felt that he has all that he needs to, be, to walk by himself. So, Abraham is a very gentle spiritual father, and I know God is also a very gentle father. He never forces us to follow him. He always calls us. He never, you know, grab us by the neck and drag us and follow me. He doesn't do that. He always beckons, come, follow me. He always gives us a choice because he wants us to follow him not as a servant, but as a son, as an adopted son. We are not even worthy to become his son, but he gave us a chance. And it should be our choice to follow him. Following 100 and 100,000, even though I've heard it so many times, all the elders, all the pastors, all, all the leaders in and every ministry has always communicated this. They are so excited. But we must understand that God will never force you into this. God will always beckon you into it. It should be your choice. The choice is now. The test is now lot failed the test this was the test genesis 13 verse 8 finally abram said to lot let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen after or after all we are close relatives suddenly the word relatives comes up again it used to be, it, uh, Abraham didn't even consider Lot as relatives. But suddenly, in a choice, Abraham was very frank. Actually, you're just a relative, you know. Don't you remember? You're just my relative. It should be your choice whether you follow me as a son or not. It's your choice. Suddenly, God is always giving you the chance. God is very good. Everyone who believes that God is good all the time, please say amen with me. Amen. Yeah, God is so good, but God is always frank with us. We are not worthy to follow Him, actually. We are not worthy to get this spiritual inheritance that God has given us through Jesus Christ. It is too powerful. It's too precious for us. Dirty, sinning mind, all thinking about ourselves, and God is giving us the blood of Jesus to save us? This is just too precious. Sometimes God wants to remind us we're just relative. We're not even a son. We're not worthy. Even Paul understood this. That's why Paul in the Bible 
said this. In Ephesians 3, 8. Ephesians 3, 8. Paul is describing this feeling of being a, just a relative. Although Paul knows a lot about the Bible. He was a Pharisee. He knows everything the Bible back and forth. He can argue with you about verses in the Old Testament. He's, he's an expert in everything about the Bible. He knows the history of, uh, from uh, Adam until the Old Testament. He knows everything, but this is how he felt. He knows he's just a relative. He said, though I am the least deserving of all God's people. And he's the one that he can, he can heal the sick. He can even raise up the dead. He has raised up churches everywhere. He has disciples everywhere. When he preached, a lot of people got healed. When he preached, a lot of people get baptized. Yet, this is how he felt. Though I am the least deserving, he knows he didn't deserve this. And this is Paul. The one who wrote 13 Bible and Paul said, I'm the least deserving of all God's people. What a humble man. What a proper and frank. He knows who he is in front of God. He said, I'm the least deserving of all God's people. He, God, graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. He said that it's a privilege when we can share the inheritance to the others who haven't seen the treasures of God in Christ. It's a privilege when we are being asked to serve in God's church. It's a privilege that we are being asked to serve God through the 100 churches and 100,000. It's a privilege. It should not be forced upon you. It should be your choice and you should know it with eyes wide open, knowing that we are just a relative. We are the least deserving and we say, it's a privilege that we can serve in this church to build 100 churches and 100,000. It should be our choice. We should not be like Lot. What Lot did was when Abraham said that, let not, after all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. You should know this is a choice whether you want to follow or not. It's your choice. You have been with this church all this time. Now there's a change. It's your choice to follow. It's open. The way is not set. It's your choice to follow Jesus Christ. It's your choice to become loyal or not. It's your choice to serve in this 100 and 100,000 or not. This road, this purpose, this vision from God, it's your choice to follow in this road or not. Take your choice of any section of the land you want, and we will separate. If you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land to the right. If you, prepare the, if you prefer the land on the right, then I'll go to the left. God is very gracious, and I believe As spiritual fathers, I believe all the elders and the pastors and the leaders in this church are, are also very gracious. They will never force you into this great and wonderful treasures inside the vision. It should be your choice. It's an open choice. God will never make you, force you into it. It should be your own choice. First ten. Lot took a long look. Can you say with me? Long look. He decides for a long time. I want you to take a long look at 100 and 100,000. Do not discount it. 
because it's your choice. But unfortunately, Lot took a long look at the wrong choice. He took a long look at the fertile plains of the Jordan Valley in the direction of Soar. That's the opposite of God's vision. Sometimes when God gives you a choice whether to stay in comfort zone or to go with God's vision, you prefer the comfort. You prefer, prefer the fertile lands when you, where you don't have to work too hard. You prefer not to preach. You prefer not to invite the new friends. You, it's very hard to invite new friends to church. It's very hard. I mean, most of the time they will ridicule you. You know, they, they will say, I have my own way. You have your own way. Don't even force me. They will, they will threaten you. They will ridicule you. If you say hallelujah, most of the time they will think you as the hallelujah person. Isn't it? I don't know. My, 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 my mother, when he, she was uh, born again when she's 60-something years old. Started with us, me and my wife. We got baptized. We prayed for, for my, my parents and they got baptized. Since my mother was being baptized, I believe my, my mother is one of the best evangelists ever. Just give her five minutes with a new person that she doesn't know. She will, in five minutes, she will know whether they're married or not, where they live, and how many sons, daughters, or uh, nephews they have, and whether they go to church or not. In the end, that's, that's in five minutes. And she will always ask them, hey, come join us next Sunday. Or our cell group is on, on Tuesday. Hey, come to my cell group. She's a cell group leader. She, she's a home fellowship leader. So she always says, come, come on Tuesday. Come, come to my cell group. Come on, come. So everyone around her, she doesn't care whether she has asked them 20 times or one time. So uh, those who've been asked maybe 10 times will call her the hallelujah lady. Because every time she comes, she will always say, hey, come join me on Tuesday. Come join me on Sunday. Come. So whenever my mother comes to that, their place of maybe it's a restaurant, maybe it's a, a hair, hairdresser, the hairdresser will come, don't tell me. Then my mother comes, don't tell, don't, don't tell her that I'm, I'm inside, okay? I want to go inside. Otherwise, she will preach to me, you know? So most of us who preaches or evangelize will receive ridicule or hardship. Most of us will choose comfort. Most of us, when being presented with a new vision, of 100,000 disciples, you will get intimidated. Oh, no, more people will ridicule me. More people, maybe I'll stay with my Christian friends. They won't ridicule me. We, we sing hallelujah together, you know. So most of us will choose and take a long look at the fertile lands of our comfort. It's a choice. It's your choice. I'm asking you, please choose God's vision. Whether it's hard or not, it's just loyalty to God's vision. It's just following your spiritual father. He was the one who adopted you at the first place. You were just a relative, and he treated you like a son. And you're just going to leave him just like that? That's what Lot did. The whole area was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord. So spiritual. And beautiful land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley to the east of them. He went there with his flocks and servants and parted company with his uncle Abraham. There was no uncle before that. There was no mention of the word uncle. I believe he called Abraham father. Maybe a stepdad, but still stepfather. But then, at that moment when they parted, 
it is revealed that actually you're just a relative. In the moments of changes, changes of vision, changes of direction of the church, changes of leadership, it will be revealed whether you are a true son or just a relative. If you choose right, then you will receive the inheritance. If you choose wrong, you will not receive the inheritance. Because I believe, this is what I believe. Do you know what is Lot's inheritance? Because of the insist insistence of Abraham, do you know how much Abraham loved Lot? Even though Lot left Abraham, how many times has Abraham saved Lot's life? At least two times. When Abra uh, Lot was being attacked by five kings, Abraham fought for Lot just to save Lot's life. Abraham went to war for Lot. He loved Lot so much. That's not the only time. Then the, the next time was when God wants to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot went and negotiated against, you know, the risk of God getting angry at Abraham. And he negotiated for Lot in, in, in front of God. Please save Sodom and Gomorrah. Please save Sodom and Gomorrah. So many times he was really, he loved Lot so much. So I believe there's an inheritance for Lot because just because of the insistence of Abraham. Sometimes we are in church just because someone is so insistent on, on preaching to you. I know I'm here just because of the faith of my spiritual father. Otherwise, I've, I, was, I, will, I will be gone. I will not be here. I will choose my own Jordan Valley. I will choose my own Sodom and Gomorrah because in my life, actually, I want to choose for myself, for more my comfort. I came to Christ because I need money. I came to Christ because I was in debt. So when I pray, I'm praying for my own financial benefit. So if I, I was being taken, if there's a test, I would fail. I'm here just because there is a spiritual father, Pastor Philip actually. He saved me. He said there was a time when he testified about myself. He said to a lot of people, he said that when I met him, I was only like a beggar on the side. In church though, it's like but I, I was on the, uh, next to the road with my last meal and I have nothing else. I was like a beggar. I was begging God, God, this is my last meal. I don't have anything else. Please save my company. Please save me. I, I'm in debt. I have nothing else. I was begging. And Pastor Philip said, then I give him the anointing and my faith. I give him, my, I loan him my anointing. I loan him my faith so that he rose up and I, get, I got out of my debt. I got out of my debt and then for, I served the Lord for several years. And then something happened when I was begging <laughs> in a way when I was in debt, Pastor Philip always gave me this faith. He always say to me when I was in debt, when I didn't have any money, he always say to me, one day you will eat with me in a cafe in Paris and laugh about what you are going through right now. When you don't have any money, you don't even think about air travel. It's so expensive, especially going to Paris. And especially with the euro against, uh, against rupiah, you know, it's like 13,000. And when you eat uh, an Indonesian uh, minimum wage is about 20 euros. Or so. so when, that's a minimum wage. No, maybe about 50 euros, 50 euros. 50 euros, that's a minimum wage. If you eat in, in a, a cafe in Paris, it's about 50 euros. That's one month's wage. It's not including the air travel. So when you are in debt and your pastor is saying, one day we'll eat in a cafe in Paris and laugh about it. I was right. yeah, right, okay. But it was a prophecy. 
because in 2008, that happened. Can you please show the picture Philip and I read in Paris? Yeah, yeah, see, I was smiling, yeah, I was laughing, yeah, please give a, a big clap for Jesus Christ. With Pastor Philip and Irene, we were in a cafe in Paris and we were laughing about that. And uh, so I believe my spiritual, spiritual father fought for my well-being. I got the inheritance because of his faith. So I owe it to him that I know that I got all these blessings because he raised me up. I know I didn't get the vision. I didn't have the vision and the courage to really believe in God. And my spiritual father, Pastor Philip, gave it to me because of him. I believe that one day I can get through it. One day I will be uh, financially well again. And it happened. But during that time, Pastor Philip spoke to me just like Abraham spoke to Lot. Suddenly he said this to us while we were smiling in a cafe in Paris. You know, he said this, okay, from now on, you don't owe me anything. From now on, you don't have to follow me. The road is open to you. You don't have to serve anything. You don't have to follow anything. You don't have to do anything. You are on your own. You are wealthy enough. You can fly to Paris by on your own, so you're wealthy enough. While uh, Pastor Philip was saying all this, my wife started to cry. She was like, why, Pastor Philip? What's wrong? What did I do wrong? Why, why can't I minister under you? Why? Why, why didn't you want me to follow you? What's wrong? What, did I do anything wrong? Did I sin? She was crying. I was not because I was confused. I was like, what? What happened? What's wrong? My, so my, my, my wife, she's the wise one. <laughs> she, she was like, no, Pastor Philip, no. She is not lot. <laughs> she's not lot. Even though it's open, she was, no, I want to follow you. We want to follow. She, she's, uh, she's speaking for us. Because I was like, I went, what? What's going on here? We're speaking. We're supposed to uh, laugh. And it's like he's saying goodbye. He's like, what, what's going on here? I was slow. I was way slower than my wife. She got it from God. She, she chose not to become a lot. She chose, no, I want to follow you. We want to follow you. We want to minister. I want, your vision is my vision. I, I don't, no, I don't want to go anywhere. Wherever you're going, we, we want to go. And then suddenly, Pastor Philip said this verse. This is a very archaic verse for me. This is in uh, Exodus 21. Verse 2 to 6. I just want to briefly mention it because it hurts when I read it. It, it says something like that. Because Pastor Phil mentioned this verse, so uh, I never really understood it until that time. He said, If you buy a Hebrew slave, he may serve you for no more than six years. Set him free in the seventh year, and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he... If he was single, then he became your slave, he shall live single. But if he was married before he became slave, then his wife must be freed with him. If his mother, master gave him a wife while he was a slave and he gave, he had, they, had, uh, they had sons and daughters, they will, then only the man will be free for the seventh year, but his wife and children will still belong to his master. But the slave may declare, I love my master, my wife, and my children. I do not want to go free. Then Pastor Philip suddenly mentioned this verse and he said, so you choose not to be free, huh? While he was uh, mentioning this verse, the only thing that I was thinking in my, my, my mind was, I was a slave? I was a slave? But that's the same thing that Abraham mentioned to Lot. You are, after all, you are a relative. After all, but I was not a son. Yes, you're just a relative. So I was like, I was not a son. Yes, you're just a slave. You, was, you were born into sin. You were bonded, but you received this inheritance because God gave you this grace. 
So it's like, I was just a slave. I was thinking like so many times, I was just a slave. I was, I was a, but now, but then still my choice. I, I want to become a servant to God. I put myself in chain to God as my choice. I want to serve God because I love my master. I want to serve God because I love my church. Because I know I owe everything through the church and I owe everything to God the Father. So I give myself up. I'm, I'm a servant of God because it's my choice. It's never because it's my job description. Because I have to, but it's my choice. Today, I want to call you up. What is your choice? 100 and 100,000. It's never a must. It's a choice. Do you want to become a lot or do you want to become a son? Do you want to become just a relative, a slave of, or a son? A slave will only have a wage, but a son will have the inheritance. I chose to become a son. I chose to remain loyal today. God is calling you out. Please, all, let us all stand up. Philippians 2.17 It says, But I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God. Just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share in that joy. To serve the Lord should be joyful. We should rejoice when we make the choice to serve that vision, to serve God. When we make the choice that I want to follow the Lord. I want to follow my spiritual leaders. I want to follow them by my own choice. There is no one forcing me, not God, not even the leaders here, not the spiritual fathers. It's my choice and I'm rejoicing in it. It is my offering. Every single soul that you give to God is not a must, it's an offering to God. It's your life offering, it's like a liquid offering to God. Every new friend, every new disciple here is just an offering of your life to God because you made your choice to become loyal to God. This 100 and 100,000 is not a burden. It's a choice to give an offering to God. It should be your life offering. Right now, all the leaders here are giving a rejoice. That's why they're so excited about this 100 and 100,000 because it's like a huge opportunity to give an offering. This is the God has given us the opportunity to give this offering to God. This anointing, this endless treasure is being prepared for you. All those who choose this, you will receive the inheritance. Today is the test. Today, God is asking you whether you are a son or a relative. Whether you are a son or a slave. I was given the choice and I freely, with joy i say no i want to become a son i'm i bonded myself to my church because i'm rejoicing in giving up my life to serve god the father today god is asking you as well do you want to become a son or do you want to become a relative do you want to become a son or a slave today is god god is calling you everyone bow, bow head every head bow down this is between you and God. Even though as a spiritual father, your leaders are asking you, but it is actually God is asking you. Because loyalty is not by time. Loyal, loyalty is by choice. Loyalty is giving your life. Loyalty is actually understanding, frankly, that we actually are only a slave. God is giving you this chance not because you are worthy, but because God gave you this grace to serve 
the Lord. This is an opportunity to serve Him. It's a privilege to serve Him. We are being offered a privilege right now. Let's this choice, that this altar up here is a choice. If you say to God, Lord, I want to become a son, I will be rejoicing when I make the choice. I will say, I will be with my spiritual fathers in this new era, in this new change. I will say, I will remain faithful. I will follow you, Lord. I will follow my spiritual fathers because I know I owe them actually. I owe this inheritance through their faith. They first have faith in God because of their faith. Now we have faith in God. That's why we say thank you. We are grateful. So now we want to serve because we love our church. We love our church. Therefore, we say, I want to serve the vision of this church. I want to serve the 100 and 100 the thousand everyone who says I want to serve please come forward I want to say I am a son I'm not a relative I'm not a slave I am a son I don't want to become a lot I want to be a son everyone who says I want to become a son please come forward and say to God this is between you and God please come forward and say to God I want to choose you Lord I want to say loyal to you I want to give my life as an offering. I want to say, to say to you, my ministry to you is my life. It's not a job description, but it's my life. Please come forward just to say, I want to serve. Stay loyal to you. This is a test. Today is a test. Just a test to say whether you are a son or just a relative. Please come forward slowly because God doesn't want to force you. It's from yourself. It should be a joy for you to give your life for God through this church. Please come forward. Please come forward and join the elders. Join this new opportunity of serving the Lord in a new era, in a new vision. 100 churches and 100,000 disciples. It's a new era when we serve we give a liquid offering, our life as a liquid offering to God. Every single life that we baptize and we disciple for Jesus Christ is a new offering. Let us come and say to God, I, I don't want to be a lot, I want to become a son. Everyone, please raise your hands and say, this is my life. I offer you my life as an offering. Whatever I have, I give to you. I know that you chose me not because I'm smart. You chose me not because I'm the best, but you gave me a chance anyway. I was just a servant, but you, yet you chose me as an adopted son. I was just a relative. I was not worthy, but yet you chose me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the, for, thank you for the chance. Thank you for the privilege of serving you as a son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood that makes us can can worship you as a son thank you lord thank you for everything this is my life everyone raise up your hands and please pray in tongues and worship him give him your grateful uh, grateful worship for him thank you for everything this is i'm grateful i don't know i do not deserve this i'm the least deserving of all god's people but at least i have this opportunity to serve you thank you lord thank you Thank you. I will serve you. I will serve you in any which way that I can in this 100 and 100,000. I want to give everything that I have, my liquid offering until the end, until my life is spent. I will give it to you, Lord. When I'm giving it to my spiritual father, I know I'm giving it to you in the end. My, my ultimate loyalty is towards God, the father who gave you the vision to this church. Thank you, Lord, for all this opportunity shandara bakara kora ba shandara bakara kora lara ba shandara bakara can please uh, the elders please hug each one of them and please let us from indonesia help you as well can you can please the team from uh, Surabaya please come up here and please hug them and tell them God loves you you are God's son God loves you God loves you please tell them please hug each one of them 
tell them that God loves you. God loves you. Please, all the pastors, all, all the leaders, please hug each one of them who's giving the offering of their lives, saying, God loves you. You are the son of God. You are the daughter of God. God loves you. Please accept our hugs as the hug of God the Father. The acceptance of God the Father is saying, Yes, you are my son. Even though you are not worthy, you but you are my son. God is ac accepting your offering right now, the offering of your life. Shantara Bakaralah.